Thank you. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to worship. We're glad you're here with us this morning in person. We also welcome those of you who are watching us live on our YouTube broadcast. I would ask if you would to please pass along the attendance pads and sign in. Let us know if you're being with us. Those of you who are watching us online, if you'd be so kind as to text chat and let us know who you are and where you're from. Uh, my understanding is we have more than 130 subscribers and we don't know most of you, so we'd love to know some of you. Please check in. All right, so a number of announcements for this morning. First, I want to welcome you to join us in fellowship. After the service, we'll be meeting in Calvin Hall 
for some lovely refreshments and conversation. So please uh, do join us. And um, before we get into the per capita thing, which is there, I just want to let you all know that last Sunday's love offering is well over $3,000 in a week. So thank you um, for the, the giving that you have done. It's just absolutely amazing. Speaking of giving, if you've not given your per capita yet for $45.60 and you are a member of this church, we encourage you to do so. Today is a, a fun and a silly day in terms of our offering time, which we'll be doing in just a little bit. We're collecting our fish banks for the one great hour of sharing. You'll hear a little bit about that offering and what it goes to support. There's a video we'll be showing in just a little bit that will tell you more. But if you brought your fish banks or if you didn't bring your fish banks and you want to get an envelope, uh, there are extra envelopes for fishing in the back. And I've been told by all our fisher folk that they're not really actual uh, sticky hooks. They're, they're, they're not going to hurt you. So I just wanted to be clear on that. I also wanted to invite you to order Easter lilies for our Easter service next Sunday. There are flyers in the bulletins and you can give an Easter lily in honor or in memory of someone. Just fill out the form today and we ask for a donation of $15 to cover cost. Next, I wanna remind you that we have a very special service coming up this Thursday. Normally our Monday Thursday services are here However, next week we will be at the United Methodist Church on March 28th. There is a service at 6 o'clock p.m. and there will be a meal that's part of that service. Uh, if you are interested in participating in that service, and I hope that we, we get a big turnout, uh, please do let us know either through the emails we've been sending or by contacting the church office. Since there's a meal involved, we need to know uh, what our numbers are. And then coming up on Easter Saturday, March 30th from 1 until 3 p.m., we have our Easter Fair. There'll be crafts, all kinds of fun activities for kids and young at heart. Uh, my understanding is there will be a, a balloon clown, somebody who makes things with balloons. And when I heard about that, I said, great, that gives me an opportunity to get over my fear of clowns. We'll see, <clears throat> but anyway, it should be a lot of fun, so please do join us again Saturday, March 30th from 1 until 3. And then a reminder that next Sunday, Easter Sunday, we have one combined service. It'll be here at 10 o'clock a.m. We invite you to bring a flower from home for decorating our flower cross symbolizing new life in Christ. In addition, we're going to be having an Easter brunch after the service. So one, please come. Two, please bring a flower. And if you don't have a flower, don't worry. We'll have flowers available for you uh, to bring and to put on the cross. And then to remind you, uh, my sabbatical begins on April 1st. And it's interesting. I haven't had really any time to think about it because I've been so busy. But yesterday, after a very full day between a session retreat and getting ready for today's service, at five o'clock, I put my worship planning sheet into the uh, file, and that's when it hit me. Ew, you have a week left, what? Uh, so that was a bit of a surprise, but I'm looking forward to my time away, as well as my time coming back uh, to this congregation. I wanna remind you that the Lunch Bunch will be meeting on Friday, April 12th at 1130 at Punky's Diner in Medford. Um, that's a lot of fun to eat at Punky's, so if you haven't done that, I encourage you to go. And then coming up on April 20th, this has been something that's been a long time coming for the community of Ashland. We will be having a wall raising ceremony, and that'll be on Saturday, April 20th, the Habitat Wall Raising at the Beach Creek subdivision just off of Mountain behind the police station. We will be scheduling volunteers very soon uh, to begin helping with the build. You do not have to be a talented carpenter to be uh, on the site. I have been a Habitat volunteer since 2003. I've never learned a thing about carpentry until I came and started working with Habitat. So um, we hope you'll join us for that wall raising. And then a message from B. Berry, uh, who says that if you are 65 years and older, 
you are suggested to receive a uh, COVID booster and you can get that by calling their office to schedule an appointment. Do want to remind you that uh, we're always looking for more donations with our little free pantry helping folks who are food insecure. Uh, my understanding is that there's quite a bit of stuff uh, in the little free pantry right now that some of it that doesn't need to be there. So if anyone feels led to help clean up, that would be great, um, including some nuts that are starting to go not so great. Um, but maybe that's good bird food. Uh, I don't know. So anyway, just wanted to share that. A reminder, if you're visiting us for the first time, um, we have homemade jam we'd like to give to you. Those of you who are watching us online, same uh, goes for you too. If you just give us your information, we'll send you a jar of jam, just like Harry and David, except better. Um, past and current sermons are available on our church website. And now, uh, just to give you an idea of what this one great hour of sharing is all about, we have a little video. In 1946, Bishop Henry Knox Sherrill of the Episcopal Church set an audacious goal of raising $1 million in one hour for world relief. One year later, the former UPCUSA and the PCUS, predecessor denominations of the Presbyterian Church USA, joined in, followed by several other denominations in 1949. At the heart of this initiative was the desire to help those in need including disaster relief, refugee assistance, and development aid. Today, the One Great Hour of Sharing stands as the single largest way that Presbyterians come together to bring their first fruits to benefit God's world. Over the years, countless lives have been transformed and hope rekindled through the work of the One Great Hour of Sharing. For over seven decades, this initiative has been vital in restoring hope, rebuilding dreams, and empowering communities to create a world that reflects God's love. It has served as a tangible expression of our thanks for all that God gives us and an opportunity to share our blessings with others. As we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the One Great Hour of Sharing, we look forward to the bright future ahead. We continue to strive to make a difference in the world and to bring hope to those who are in need. So on this special occasion, let us rededicate ourselves to this sacred call and with joyful hearts continue to give generously. Okay, now comes the fun part. If you have your fishing bank or if you have your offering uh, envelope, here come the fisher folks. They're going to start grabbing um, their fish. And as I said, they're not real hooks, so don't worry. All right, here they come. There we go. Oh, come on, Marcia. I didn't even put that one on the hook. Oh, that's a big one. more fish out there. Okay. Yep. Have to look for another fishing hole later on today then. Thank you. Oh, we got one more. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you very much for your donations for one great hour of sharing. Definitely helps and makes a difference in this world. Okay.
Well, now that our, our fisher folk are gone, now let us bring our hearts and minds together as we worship God. Good morning. Uh, as we go through the worship this morning, I will point out that <clears throat> throughout in your bulletins, and as you will see up here, the word Hosanna appears frequently. Every single time, it is followed by an exclamation point. Hosanna was originally a uh, prayer of pleading, but through the centuries, it's become a prayer of joy. I encourage you all to shout Hosanna this morning as we go through the order of worship. Sing songs of the loudest praise. Hosanna. Sing songs that are unashamed. Hosanna. Sing songs without being afraid. Hosanna. Sing for the God of tomorrow and today. Hosanna. Let, Let us, us worship, worship the Messiah. <clears throat> Terrific. Our first hymn this morning is All Glory, Laud, and Honor. And if you have a palm branch, we want you to wave it during the hymn. Also, if you're seated next to a piece of cloth on the edge of the pews, I invite you to put the cloth out in the center of the aisle as we remember Jesus entering into Jerusalem. Thank you.
Now we have another chore. We probably should pick up the uh, cloths now so that <clears throat> during the time of uh, yeah, passing of the peace, we don't want anybody to thank you. The Gospel of John tells us that crowds gathered to praise Jesus as he entered Jerusalem, singing and shouting with confidence. After describing the crowd, however, the Gospel writer zooms in on the disciples and tells us that while the crowd shouted praise at Jesus, the disciples were confused. The text says the disciples did not understand what was happening. A lot of our lives may look like this, Either we understand God's presence in our lives and want to shout it from the rooftop, or we're standing on the side of the parade, missing our chance to shout too. That is why we need the prayer of confession, because life happens fast, and without a doubt we have stood where the disciples stood. So, let us pray, for we don't want to miss our chance to shout our praises. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, we want to run into the streets and sing your praise. We want to be bold and unashamed of this good news gospel. However, too often we find ourselves standing against the wall. Too often we stay quiet. Too often we let others carry the song. Forgive us for the moments when we could lead the parade but instead find ourselves standing on the sidelines. Show us which songs are ours to sing. Show us which parades are ours to lead. Then give us the courage and conviction to do both. With hope and honesty, we pray. Amen. Now we'll take a moment of silence. Friends, no matter where you are on the parade route, whether you are waving palm branches through the streets or standing against the wall, quiet and cautious, Jesus marched for you. Jesus' love, his striving for justice and mercy, it was for you. You are included in this story and nothing can ever change that. So hear these words and trust them deep in your bones. We have reason to sing. For Jesus Christ loved you yesterday, Jesus Christ loves you today, and Jesus Christ will love you tomorrow. You are forgiven, claimed, and sent to serve. Go out and sing. Go out trusting these words. Hosanna. Amen. Now it's time to pass the peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Please stand and wander.
The scripture passage this morning is obviously very familiar. From John chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God and thank you, John. <clears throat> Will you pray with me, please? God, we pray for you to be with us as we begin this journey through Holy Week. May this story today remind us of who we are called to be and how we are called to live in this world. Help us to understand who Messiah was then and who Messiah is today. May the words of my mouth and the meditations upon each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm curious, show of hands, how many of you have been involved in a parade before? Has anybody not ever been part of a parade? Yeah, I think it's a pretty common experience. I still remember my very first parade way back in 1966. Fair Oaks, California, it was the Halloween Parade. And uh, I was four years old. My mother decided on my costume, which of all things uh, was Huckleberry Finn from Mark Twain's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. That's all well and good except for the fact that um, I had not read the story yet and I had no idea who Huckleberry Finn was. But I dressed up with a straw hat and I had suspenders and I had my jeans were cut out in kind of the zigzags all the way around. I had a, a fishing pole, kind of like one of the poles you saw this morning, and then I had a corn cob pipe. And I think I had um, sandals, so I looked the part. That being said, this was 1966, and one of the most popular television shows for young boys at that time was Batman. And I saw a few folks in Batman costumes and thought, why am I Huck Finn when I could have been Batman. But despite that, I thoroughly enjoyed myself in my first parade. I was walking down the streets and waving to people as Huck Finn would wave to people. I saw a band uh, playing. There was a wonderful baton twirler in front. I'd never seen anybody do that with a baton before. That first parade was one I will never forget. So is that what this procession by Jesus was? Was it a parade? Or was it something entirely different? For the few of you who have been following the lecture series of John Dominique Crossan, he believes this procession was not a parade, but rather a protest during a particularly volatile time in Jerusalem, the festival of Passover. Jerusalem swelled in population from 40,000 to well over 200,000 during Passover. This celebration of liberation from Egypt was a reminder for the people of God they were once again oppressed and they longed for freedom, freedom from Roman rule. There had been a riot in 5 BC at Passover, the beginning of a rebellion against Roman rule that had to be put down with massive force. Thousands of people were crucified as part of that protest. There were also several nonviolent Passover protests by the Jewish people. Sit-down protests in 4 BC, 6 AD, and 26 AD. Why did Jesus go to Jerusalem at such a heightened time? Crossan believes Jesus' followers implored him to go to Jerusalem during this huge festival 
to make a statement against Roman rule and temple collaboration with an oppressor. I think Jesus wanted to go to the center of worship. I think he may have known his fate already and sought to confront the temple leaders and Roman power and proclaim a kingdom unlike any other. Let's dive into this morning's passage to find out more. Chapter 12 begins with Jesus traveling before Passover to the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus at Bethany. He travels to be with his friends before confronting the day's powers. During the meal, Jesus is anointed with perfume, a year's worth of wages for burial. Perhaps Mary was saving it for Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised earlier from the dead. And she didn't need it for her brother anymore. So she saw an opportunity to foreshadow what would soon happen at Golgotha. Mary and Martha were part of the crowd of disciples who followed Jesus. And although women were rarely mentioned, they were present in the background. So they too must have heard the predictions of suffering and death. Perhaps this was Mary's way of honoring her rabbi and friend before such things occurred. Just before this morning's passage, we read that great crowds wanted to see Jesus and also Lazarus at the home in Bethany. The great crowd then learns of Jesus' plan to go to Jerusalem the next day. Word spreads to the Passover crowds that Jesus is on his way and they gather to wait at the city's north gate near the Mount of Olives. Jesus' entry is a fulfillment of a coming Messiah, as mentioned by latter prophet Zechariah. Zechariah 9.9 states, Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on the colt of a donkey. So begins Jesus' peasant demonstration. A humble procession featuring the Messiah riding a young donkey, accompanied by fellow peasants coming from the north into Jerusalem. Unlike the other accounts of today's story, Jesus finds his own young donkey to ride. He wants to make a statement about who Messiah is and is not. He does not enter the city on a war horse. This animal symbolizes humility and peace. The fact that he is on a level with the people on this young donkey suggests he's with the crowd, not above them. If you paid attention these last few Sundays, and you may be asking right now, well, what about Peter? I thought we were focusing on him during the whole season of Lent. Well, you are correct in pondering such a question. However, in all of the Palm Sunday accounts, none of the disciples are named. We can only imagine what Peter may have done as they got ready to go into the city's north gate. I imagine Peter at the front, and by the way, there are a number of images of Palm Sunday with Peter leading Jesus on the donkey. As Jesus secures that young donkey, I imagine him approaching Peter and saying, get thee behind me, Peter. But truthfully, we do not know what he or the other disciples did as the procession began. The gathered crowds now waved palm branches, symbolizing hope and liberation. Then they shout out Psalm 118, verse 26, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Some believe this psalm was said in the temple every morning and used as people entered the temple, especially during the festival of Passover. The Hosanna cheer comes from verses 25 and 26 in the psalm. And the next verse refers to having branches in hand as one joins in the procession of the one who comes to save. However, notice that the crowds do add one important addition when they praise Jesus. They call him King of Israel. This title threatened Herod Antipas one of the three sons of Herod the Great and a wannabe puppet king of the Jewish people. If the Pharisees had to toe the line with Herod Antipas, who had to toe the line with Rome, 
and this title was a problem. Jesus being proclaimed as a king threatened this fragile relationship. Rome was concerned that perhaps a leader of a new movement was coming into Jerusalem during this already difficult time of festival. The last thing they wanted was trouble. This is why a very different demonstration came through the city's western gate. It represented a different king and a different kingdom. The Roman governor Pontius Pilate entered Jerusalem, but was not alone. Pilate, residing primarily in Caesarea by the sea, made an annual show of force during Passover. His parade showcased Roman imperial power, cavalry on horses, foot shoulders, leather armor, helmets, weapons, banners, golden eagles mounted on poles, sun glinting on metal and gold. The sound of marching feet, creaking leather, and beating drums struck fear into the onlookers. Pilate aimed to deter any uprising against Roman rule during Passover. Crosson emphasizes that Pilate's procession displayed imperial power and Roman imperial theology. It reminded everyone that Caesar Augustus was not just the emperor of Rome, but also the son of God, the son of Julius Caesar. So there were two demonstrations on that day, one of peace and one of power. One kingdom establishing justice, the other demonstrating power through war, death, and assimilation. Two kings, two kingdoms, and radically different visions for the world collided on that day. As we draw to a close, I want to focus on three expect, on the expectations of three groups. First, let us consider the crowds shouting Hosanna. They who gathered had tried making him king back when he fed thousands near Capernaum and the Sea of Galilee. The crowd became enthused and said, this is the prophet who has come into the world. They wanted to make him their Messiah right there and then, but Jesus withdrew. The crowd wanted to make Jesus their kind of king and he wanted no part of it. The Passover crowd gathered had a similar notion to crown Jesus as the conquering Messiah who would break the rod of the oppressor and free God's people from Roman rule. The crowd wanted to anoint their leader and they were spoiling for a fight. They wanted and expected a revolutionary to overthrow the status quo, but Jesus has no idea, or no intention rather, of being that kind of Messiah. Theologian Lindsay S. Jodry writes, in light of Jesus' death, it becomes clear that this king of the Jews was not riding into Jerusalem to secure the geopolitical power of the monarchy for Israel. Rather, Jesus came to speak truth to power in both the Roman Empire and the Jewish religious establishment. He also told his own followers the hard truth that those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. So what are the expectations of the disciples in this moment? According to John's Gospel, they are confused. They did not understand these things at first, John 12, 15 tells us. Perhaps they still wondered if Jesus would see the power behind the crowds and seize that moment, rule in power with the disciples at his side. A noble steed would have been a good choice for a mount, but instead, he's on a donkey? It's all so confusing. Only in hindsight did they understand. It was only by witnessing the Messiah's suffering and death that the correct perspective of this day made sense. And what about us, this crowd here today and online? What are our expectations of the Messiah as we sing hymns, say that word, Hosanna, and wave palm branches? 
we do well to pause and reflect on what kind of Messiah we expect. My guess is you have experienced more than a few Palm Sundays in your own life. You've sung those hymns, you've waved the palm branches, you've shouted Hosanna. As we approach the events of Holy Week once again, what are your expectations of Jesus? What kind of king do you expect in your life? What kind of Messiah do you want? He won't embrace our political agendas. He won't rule with a brutal dictator's force or bow to the worship of a nation. He offers to teach us how to love God and neighbor, to work for justice, to bestow mercy, and make a difference in this world. Again, theologian Jodri says, Jesus is our suffering Messiah, taking on his own suffering for the good of the world, which is offered as a pattern for discipleship, like the grain of wheat that dies in order to bear much fruit. Those who follow Jesus are asked to consider how our own sacrifices might be for the greater good. So may the Messiah we are called to follow give us the courage to be his followers, to pick up our crosses, to bear much fruit through good works of compassion, and to be willing to sacrifice our comforts so that we might ease the suffering all around us. Amen. Let us have silence as we consider God's word for us this day. Let us pray. Hosanna, God, save us. Save us from ourselves. Save us from the sin that is around us, from the darkness, from the destruction, from the warfare, the greed. Help us, help us to be your followers, to lead others into your love and service and justice and peace through what we say and what we do. And sustain us through this holy week. Help us to be guided from the cross and the crucifixion to an empty tomb and a life of resurrection and hope. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able and join in singing hymn number 197, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna.
Please be seated. Might not be bad to make up another verse to that hymn. Was that a comment? <laughs> Friends, we come now to our time of prayer. Uh, this is an opportunity to share our joys, our concerns, those things that are upon our hearts. I do want to remind you we have a prayer chain that prays for whatever requests you have during the week. Just contact the church office and let us know. I do want to assure you that right now, although the button says, please contact Dan if you have a prayer request, that will change the following week. And if I end up getting a prayer request, I'll make sure it gets sent to Skip. So fear not. As we get ready to pray, we will be singing the song in the Lord. I'm sorry. We will be singing the song within our darkest night um, a few times to center ourselves. Let us sing together. So if you have a request this morning, you're welcome to raise your hand. We ask you to keep it up so that B can see you. Those of you who are online, if you have a request, just text it in, and we'll be sure to add that request as well. What prayers do we have for this morning? Well, continuing prayers for our son, Peter, who had his second chemo this past week, but also for all the kids who are headed down to Mexico and other places during spring break to build houses, do vacation Bible school, um, one for their safety, uh, both transportation and while they're there, and also for them as they learn how people in other places without stable governments live, survive somehow, and that they can feel, really be bringing a meaningful um, voice or showing God's love in, in those places. There's a lot of kids there. Okay. A, a prayer for the uh, people of Gaza. This is Ramadan, and this is a very, very trying time for our brothers and sisters within Islam and the people of Israel. So that's something that's near to my heart, knowing these people. And secondly, uh, just a note of praise and joy. Ashland's most popular pastor has now been with this congregation for seven years. We are blessed to have Dan and Paula with us. Thank you. I look forward to being not reminded about that article in the news about me, but thank you. Others. Prayers for Princess Catherine, who's undergoing um, chemo treatment for cancer right now. Also for the Russians that were killed in that horrible massacre. Yes. I wanted to give one more to you. Um, Sam Albert attended the ADM service this morning, but uh, his wife Pat is really going through it. Um, 
She was in Florida a couple of weeks ago to help her sister who is starting to battle dementia. Um, she is now uh, in Wyoming, I believe, uh, dealing with another sister whose husband has had ALS for 40 years and is um, pretty incapacitated. So please keep Pat especially um, in your prayers. Just wanted to mention that. Anything from online? Okay. All right. Friends, let us continue in prayer and we will close together with the Lord's Prayer. Blessed are you, holy God, for in Jesus Christ you came to rule in our lives, not as a king, but as a humble servant riding on a donkey. Enter into our hearts this day with your glory, that we may greet you with shouts of praise. We come to you this day asking for healing. We pray for healing in mind and body and spirit for those whom we love. We ask a special blessing on Debbie and Howdy's son, Pete, whose cancer marker has gone down. We pray for the treatments to continue to help, to give Peter time, and we pray for the miracle of remission. We pray for Princess Catherine undergoing chemotherapy that you would strengthen her and that you would keep the media at bay. We pray for your blessing on Jill's sister Mary for healing from a cyst in her brain. We pray for Randall Stothers recovering at home but still struggling with COPD. For all who are in need of your healing touch this day, O oh God, we lift them before you now in silence. We lift up our prayers for the world, for those who are struggling, those who are in mourning. Karen Amaradico asks for prayers for a friend who has just been given the news she has weeks to live. God, give her your peace. We know that your ears are open to our prayers. We pray you would graciously help those whom we lift before you, those situations in this world. We ask for your blessing on all the youth who are heading to Mexico doing vacation Bible schools, helping to build homes. We pray you would help them to learn from those whom they serve. We ask for your blessing on the Holy Land. We pray for the people of Gaza as they begun Ramadan. We ask, O oh God, for a ceasefire for the beginnings of a long-lasting solution for an end to bloodshed. We pray for an end to Russia's occupation in Ukraine. We pray for the Ukrainian people here in Ashland. We pray for them, for their blessing and their freedom. We ask you to be with those who are mourning right now in Moscow, more than 130 killed. Oh God, turn the hearts of those who have evil on their intent. We move now to a time of prayer where you will have a response. After I say the words we pray, the words are, Hosanna, save us. Christ, hear us. From all evil, from all sin, from all plots and assaults of the evil one, from the temptations and desires of the flesh, from loneliness and despair, from carelessness and neglect of duty, from loss of courage and devotion, from falling away from you, we pray, Hosanna, save us. By your coming to save humanity, by your selfless service, by your love for the weary and burdened, by your healing touch for the sick, by your invitation to all, by your welcome to the sinner, by your cross and passion, by your victory, by the might of your salvation, we pray, Hosanna, save us. To grant us your guidance and protection, to keep us, keep us pure in thought, word, and action, to guard our lives and souls, 
to make us victorious carriers of your cross, to be refreshment in hardship, to be our comfort in suffering, our companion in weary and lonely hours, to make us gentle and lovers of our neighbors. And in the hours of trial, keep us in the palm of your hand. We humbly pray, Hosanna, save us. To see and protect all who are in danger, in need and in trouble, to comfort and heal the wounded, to alleviate and shorten the pains of the dying, to free the captives, to protect and provide for the orphan and the widow, to overthrow humanity's inhumanity, to bless and strengthen all who serve their neighbors and to have mercy on all people, we humbly pray, Hosanna, save us. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, our Messiah, who was and is and is to come and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time when in the olden days we would actually pass the plate, but since we no longer do that, we do like to remind everybody to please support the church with your regular pledges and offerings. There are many ways to do that through our church website, through PayPal. You can drop it in the cute little church model in the back or uh, slip it in Dan's pocket on his way out the door, whatever works for you. <laughs> uh, we also remind you to continue to support the Beacons Fund and the wonderful work that they do. Here's our prayer of dedication. Blessed are you, God, and the one who comes in your name. Like the palms laid down on a road long ago, we prepare to lay down our gifts, gifts that ready our world for your coming, gifts that open our eyes to your appearing. Let us not misunderstand your entry into our lives. Hosanna, save us. Let us walk with you. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who rode through the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey. We believe in the Jesus of Nazareth, who challenged Rome's oppressive power with peaceful protest. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who was surrounded by crowds of dreamers and believers. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, so even today, we will sing songs of the loudest praise. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Our sending hymn is hymn 198. Right on, right on in majesty. Yeah. 
this charge and benediction. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, run to the tomb, and speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, Take heart, it is I. Be not afraid. You are called, you are blessed. In both your ups and your downs, you always belong to God. You always have God seeking you out. Go now in peace. Go trusting that good news. Amen. Please be seated as we enjoy this morning's postlude. Thank you. 